Many of the risk factors when we're using ultrasound have evolved and changed over the many years. The few very consistent features that we see are the microcalcifications, which is a, the bright spots within a, a th thyroid nodule. The other very consistent feature that we seem to find in malignancy is nodules that are taller than wide, meaning in the anterior posterior direction, they are much uh, larger. And the other feature that we tend to see is this hypoechoic feature of the thyroid nodule. And that's when the thyroid nodule is, is darker or much darker than the background um, th normal thyroid tissue. Those are the main features that we see. There are other features that we look at, such as blood flow. We look at the borders of the nodules, calcifications around the nodule. While those can give us some ideas behind uh, whether a, a nodule is malignant or not, the problem is the consistency behind those aren't as high as some of these other features that I mentioned earlier. There are three different societies when it comes to evaluation of ultrasound features of thyroid nodules. You have the Radiology Society, you have the Thyroid Association, and you also have the Association of Clinical Endocrinologists. Now all of these three societies have come up with their different classification systems which essentially look at the same ultrasound features that I mentioned earlier, but the difference between them is that they try and their scoring systems are a little different. But essentially they are, they try and keep a consistency through them. And the reason they're trying to keep a consistency is because a lot of features, we haven't determined new features in ultrasound examination. The thing that's really changed in ultrasound is the sensitivity or how well the ultrasound, the detail in the ultrasound machines are. So we can see a little bit more. But outside of seeing more, the features of the microcalcifications, the, uh, this, the shape, the borders, the vascularity, those really haven't changed much. And so that makes these societies very similar in the way they describe them. The thing that separates them is, like I said, the, uh, the different features, there are different scoring systems. And the most important thing when you're evaluating a thyroid nodule and ultrasound isn't necessarily which society you use, but more importantly is being consistent with the society. So if you're going to use the ACE criteria or the ATA criteria, it's very important to be consistent with that criteria so that you can establish, at least the radiologist or the ultrasonographer, can establish that consistency so that the practitioner that is evaluating or reviewing the report can determine to themselves whether or not these nodules should be uh, biopsied or whether or not they can just be observed long term. This is actually an interesting question because this goes along with the consistency about the ultrasonography. So the Bethesda scoring system is, has been very uh, systematic and very consistent. So because they, when they finally came out with this one classification system, the number of nodules that were determined malignant, non-malignant, really started kind of separating out. And that's what we're trying to do with the ultrasound, is trying to come up with a very solid system that we can potentially use and follow that can keep that consistency. Now with the Bethesda scale, you know, they keep improving it over the years. And by the improvements in the Bethesda scale, we're starting to see features, we're able to tease out the non-malignant nature of the thyroid. You know, the older we get, the more thyroid nodules are seen in the thyroid gland. And because of that, we are doing a lot of ultrasound biopsies to determine malignancy risk. And by using a scale, cytological scale like the Bethesda scale, we can really cut back how many unnecessary surgeries that we are doing. Previously, you'd see a nodule, you potentially would do surgery to remove the nodule. Now what we do is we really look under the, ultrasound, under the cytological, uh, with cytological evaluation, we can determine truly what is the underlying risk. Of course, there's caveats to that. We can't tell 100% in, in many of the cases, but it's slowly getting more and more 
um, refined so that we, our risk of taking out thyroid nodules unnecessarily is slowly diminishing. By using the ultrasound, previously the way biopsies used to be done before the advent of ultrasound or more sensitive ultrasound systems was by feel, by palpation. And if you're palpating a thyroid nodule and you put a needle inside, you, aren't, you don't truly know whether or not you're inside the nodule. You could be around in the, sur in the surrounding tissue, you can be potentially even going too deep or not deep enough, and because of that, it's very limited in its use, or it was very limited in its use. And also the size of the nodule made a difference. If it was a large nodule, then it's a little bit easier to determine where it is. The other thing is by using palpation method, we only can palpate a small percentage of thyroid nodules, maybe six to eight percent of, of neck palpation, you can feel the nodule, and so you're missing a lot of things. With the ultrasound, you can actually evaluate the parenchyma directly under visualization, and when you use a needle to go inside, you can directly visualize the needle as it enters the thyroid nodule. And by doing that, you can also determine which specific areas within the thyroid nodule you'd like to sample. That way, if you use an area that's a little bit more suspicious, you can get a little bit more tissue from that area rather than just kind of blindly just sampling as you go.